What's up? This is Mario and welcome to Awesome Audio. In this video we will talk about what is sound physically. Sound in real life cannot be observed. However, we usually see sound graphically represented in these forms. But what is interpreted from each of these graphics? If sound really does look like that, why do we have three different pictures? When an object, such as a bell, vibrates, it performs small movements forward and backwards, with which it continuously pushes and pulls air particles next to it. If we could visualize sound, it would actually look like the upper animation. The lower graph is what we usually imagine when we think of a sound wave, but the upper animation is closer to reality, although it is shown in really slow motion. As the object vibrates, during its movement forward, it pushes air particles, creating a region of compressed air or high pressure. These particles push the next ones, and those push the next ones, propagating a region of high pressure. At the same time, during the object's movement backwards, it pulls air particles, creating a region of expanded air or low pressure. And those particles pull the next ones, and those pull the next ones, propagating a region of low pressure through the air. It is important to mention that the particles of air themselves do not displace, but only vibrate in their point of balance. We can observe this by paying attention to any of the red dots in the first animation. This pattern continues while the object keeps vibrating. So then, that is a sound wave, a chain of pressure variations propagating through the air. Actually, almost any medium can transmit sound. However, since air is the medium that is normally in contact with our ears, then that is the medium that we consider by default when we talk about sound. However, if there isn't a medium through which pressure variations can propagate, then there can't be any sound, which is why there isn't any sound in space. It is not shown in this example, but the vibration weakens with distance, which is why things sound quieter when further away. Now, the wave at the bottom is simply a graph of what is happening in the real world. It is a more practical and simpler representation, since the upper animation is hard to draw. In the graph, the upward peaks, or crests, indicate the points of high pressure, and the downward peaks, or troughs, indicate the points of low pressure. The wavelength, given in units such as meters or centimeters, is measured between two identical points in a vibration pattern, and in the audible range, the wavelength can measure from about 2 centimeters to about 17 meters. In the image, sound propagates in a single direction. In real life, sound propagates in all directions. This is where this visual representation of sound comes from. The other two forms of visualizing sound are observed when we plot an audio clip in an audio editing software, the difference being that the first image is as seen the clip from afar, and the other image is as seen the clip zoomed in. The speed at which a sound wave travels depends in the medium through which it propagates, as well as its temperature. For dry air at 20 degrees Celsius, its speed is of 343 meters per second, or 767 miles per hour. A supersonic plane traveling at Mach 1 speed travels at 767 miles per hour. If it travels at Mach 2, then it goes at double that speed, which is 1534 miles per hour. What is seen in the image is a plane breaking the sound barrier, and those clouds are seen because breaking the sound barrier causes condensation in the air surrounding the plane. With that, we conclude this episode. In the next one, we will talk about the four characteristics of sound. If you enjoyed it, you may hit like, comment, and share to those interested. For more content like this, you may also subscribe. See you in the next video.